students. Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, a question that I guess is a long time coming. Every single student I've ever tutored has brought this question to my attention. I believe it's unit six in AP classroom. It might be like right from the beginning, like one of the first couple questions. This is in the um, unit of simple harmonic motion. Okay. So upon seeing all of the fret, <laughs> I even went on the internet and I found out there's still even teachers that are debating this particular question. So I'm going to put it to bed. Okay. This would be the video to end all videos about this question. What is the magnitude in the change of potential energy in the block spring, which is very, very important. This right here, this phrase is really the cause of all the debate. And if people would look at this phrase, block spring system itself, then it would be the end of the day. When it travels from its lowest vertical position, which is going to be right here, okay? So this is the lowest vertical position. To the highest vertical position, which is going to be somewhere up here. And that's going to be our range of, of oscillation. Now, I think another thing that confused a lot of students when I first saw this question is they assumed that L1 and L2 were equal. Guys, L1 is not equal to L2, okay? So that makes things a little bit confusing. The next thing that makes things confusing, we know that when I'm at this lowest position, you guys can read this, it has zero potential energy at the lowest point. So right here, UG is equal to zero, okay? There's no joules here because we say that the gravitation, there has zero gravitational potential energy at the lowest point in the system. It doesn't have any kinetic energy either, but it definitely has some spring potential. Now that spring potential is one half kx squared. Now we don't really need to know about that, but what we do know, okay, is that this right here is the total energy right now. Now when this thing starts to go up, there's gonna be a transfer of spring potential energy into kinetic energy, into gravitational potential energy, and when it gets up here, it is going to have some spring because it is it is stretched, right? This right here is the only place where there is no PE on the spring, okay? There is always, this entire range of oscillation, there is always a restoring force upward because this restoring force wants to bring this spring back to its equilibrium position right here. So even when it comes, even when it's right here, it has some restoring force, Fs, that's pointing upwards. And even if it came all the way to here, it still would have some Fs pointing upwards. That restoring force wants to get back to equilibrium. But if this system was closed, there would be a block spring system. If, let's just say I told you that that was a closed system. Well, in a closed system, the energy is conserved. But this, guys, is an open system. The reason that it's an open system is because we have the restoring force, which I just labeled as Fs. We have Fg, and this Fg acts from outside the system, okay? So when I say what's the change in the potential energy, all it is going to be is going to be the change in potential energy. This change is going to be the change in U, G. Because the energy of the kinetic energy and the spring potential energy is conserved because it's inside the system. So when I want to find the change in potential energy, all I have to do is say, well, my U, G initial is equal to zero joules. We stated that already. The final is going to be M, G, delta H, right? This is very well known. So if I find the change in U, G, which is just U, G final, minus U, G initial, initial is really zero. So the change in potential energy is going to be the change in this. So we say U, G, uh, the change in U, G equals 
M G delta H. Okay. But this is where things get a little bit annoying in our choices, which I did make very, very small over here. I apologize. I wanted everything on one screen. We have zero two M G L one two K naught L one L two and one half K naught in parentheses L one plus L two. That is not here. So this is where we have to do a little bit of two parts. I need an expression for the change in height and the change of mg. Well, if this goes up L2, it is going to travel through L2 and go up one more time. So my delta H, or my range of oscillation, this right here, from my highest point to my lowest point, is really 2L2. So I'm going to plug that in for delta H, 2L2. Now this mg, that becomes very, very difficult. And we remember in dynamics, it was very, very easy for us to solve for things when things were at equilibrium or moving at a constant speed. We loved that, okay? So if I were to go back now and I look at w this one, the natural length of the spring, oh, I just erased that. So let's go back and change that a little bit. Sorry, my bad. All right, I don't want to erase the spring, but I'll try and erase as much as I can. Right now, when this spring is not oscillating and it has an FG downward and it has an FS upwards, because this is at equilibrium, we can say that FS equals FG. We learned that early, early in the year. How do we solve for FS? Well, that's just KX. Thank you very much, Mr. Hook, Sir Hook. Hook's law, right? And this is equal to MG, which we learn in probably September, October, depending on where you are in the universe. Now, this right here, MG, is what we are trying to get an expression for, which is KX. So let's throw that in here. Now, we kind of see this now. We go back to our answers, and we're like, damn it. We still don't see this. We kind of have to keep going. Now, in our problem, it told me that the K, uh, K constant was K naught. So let's make that nice and pretty. Now, when I was stretched from my equilibrium position here, what was I stretched? I was stretched L1. Okay. So this X at equilibrium for here, X is equal to L1 times 2L2. That now we make that nice and neat and it becomes 2 K naught. L1, L2. This, guys, is the answer for the change in potential energy on the block spring system. If this was a block spring earth system, there would be no change because energy is conserved. The only change is the energy that works outside of this closed system, inside the system, and that is the work of gravity. The answer is C. The debate is over. Send anybody that wants to hate on you this video. If you have any other questions like this, guys, email me. I'll solve them for you. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your night. Please work hard. Be kind to other people. Keep a positive outlook. We're going to get through this together. Peace.